Hi creatives, in this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to have smooth, successful and profitable web design projects. I love web design, but in the last 8 years I've made a bunch of mistakes and I want to share them with you so you can avoid making the same ones. I'm going to focus on the design portion of websites and not so much on development because that's the area where my expertise is in, but a lot of these tips will still work if you're working in development. So here are 5 ways that web design projects can derail and how to avoid it, plus a bonus tip at the end. The first thing that can go wrong is that you don't get everything you need from your client on time. When you design a website, content is always a bit of a chicken and egg problem, isn't it? You want the content before you start designing so that you can tailor your design and make sure that it fits exactly to what your content is going to be. But at the same time, your clients might have a really hard time knowing what content to put before they have an idea of the design and the structure of the website. I always like to get everything up front so I know I have everything and there won't be a bunch of back and forth or times that just drag on. But how do you actually make sure that you get all of those files up front? First up, you need to be really, really clear with your clients already at the proposal stage. They need to know exactly what you need from them and when. That way they can prepare and they make sure that things don't get delayed. Next up, we need to make it super easy for our clients to send us those files. So if we leave it up to clients to send them however they like, what I found is that you tend to end up with a lot of different methods because you might have some email attachments that you're trying to look for. You might have sharing links that expire after a week and you're trying to find those files and the link hasn't expired. Pick a tool that you think will be the best fit, and maybe one that you're already used to, and then make sure that you onboard your clients on how to use it. So that could be as simple as a couple sentences in an email and then you send them a link to the tool or talking them through it when you have the discovery session, for example. We're actually working on a new version of our own tool called Kayla as well, uh, which takes care of all of this for you. And we're going to be releasing the updated version soon. So I'll pop a link down in the description where you can go and sign up to find out when we release it if you're interested. The second reason that a lot of web design projects fail is because there's a lack of communication between the web designer and the developer. If you have both of those roles, that might not be a problem for you, but if you're creating the design and then are handing it off to someone else, there might be different features that are just not practical, or maybe you need plugins that are expensive for your clients to pay for. So we need to be aware of all those things and have that open communication throughout the process. It's just really disheartening to create a beautiful design that you're super excited about and that your clients love. And then it turns out that it just can't be built the way that you were envisioning it. So we really want to make sure that we have that communication. I like to ask already in the discovery stage what platform they're going to be using because that will help dictate a little bit about the functionalities that we can use. So let's say they're using code from scratch or a program like WordPress or Webflow, there's a lot of flexibility there. But if they're using a builder like let's say Squarespace or Wix, then you might want to ask if they're going to have someone that can add custom codes to those as well, or if they want you to design with the functionality that's already in those platforms in mind. If you can, I think it's a really good thing to send your wireframes already to the developer with a bit of time for them to come back with feedback and go back and forth with you before you send the wireframes to your clients. Because this way you're able to catch anything that's going to be tricky before your client falls in love with some of those features. Of course, you want to check with your client to make sure that you're allowed to share designs and strategies with someone else on the team. But if you have that okay, I think that's a really good strategy to make sure you avoid any possible mistakes or confusions. The next problem is really poor photography for the website. And you could design the most beautiful website, but if you have really low quality images, maybe they're not on brand, or maybe they're just really inconsistent and it doesn't feel like one website with one brand, that can be quite tricky and it really pulls down your whole design. As we talked about in the beginning, getting all those photos from your client can also be tricky. So if you have a situation where you receive all the photography right as you're implementing, and they're just really poor quality, your client might take multiple weeks to take new photos to send to you, and that can really delay your projects. I see two main ways around this problem. The first one is to ask your clients to share the photos that they have at a really, really early stage. That way you can proof them and make sure that they're a good fit. And it will give you some time throughout the project for them to come up with new ones if they're not a good fit. There are also some easy tricks like let's say making all of the photographs black and white and working a little bit with the exposure and the contrast to make sure that they match better. 
Another option is to offer stock photos as part of your service. So if you have a license to stock sites and you can pass those licenses on to your clients, then that can be a great way for you to have full control of the photos or to have a way for you to make sure that the site looks really consistent and beautiful. If you have a situation where you need it to be a very specific person or a very specific product, of course that's trickier, but if it's a product, you could offer to create mockups, for example, add an additional fee. Next up, we have a really common problem in all design projects, and that is scope creep. Scope creep just means that you're doing more work without being paid more. Three common places for this to happen in a web design project is one, additional pages that you just didn't know that they needed to have designed for the site to be there and you're having a hard time charging for it. It can be features that seem small at first, but they pile on and it becomes a big part of the project or lots and lots of revisions that you don't have strict rounds for. So how can we avoid this? The first thing I like to do when I create a proposal for a web design project is to check out the site map of the website, just to make sure that I have a clear understanding of all the different website pages that are included in the scope. I also make sure my client actually accepts this proposal as it is and is confirming that those are the pages that they need designed. Some really common pages to miss are pages like privacy policies, sign up pages or blog posts or resource pages that you just didn't see at first. An easy way to find the sitemap is to enter the website domain and add slash sitemap.xml at the end. It doesn't work for every website, but it's a really common way for sites to store the sitemap, so it's worth a try. Another really good way to avoid scope creep is to have a really clear design agreement where you state the number of revisions and how those revisions work. This is something that I do for every type of design projects that I do, and I like to include three rounds of revisions. Now, one round can have multiple changes, but the important thing here is to get all of those changes at once so you can sit down one time and email back once and forth so you don't have that constant communication that takes up lots of time. The last and often very overlooked part of the design process that can cause problems is the handoff of the design. You might be handing this design over to your client who is then trying to communicate that to a developer or maybe you, you're working with a partner that is a developer, for example. The goal here is to make it as easy as possible for the developer to understand and implement the design that you've created. This is especially important for things that might not show up right away, like micro interactions, transitions and animations, for example. Here's an example of a website that I designed. I wanted to show three sections with information about the client's business and we wanted two things to happen when you click the arrows. The first thing is that the image changes and the second thing is that the bar moves. To make sure we made it easy for our developer to implement this and see how we wanted the design to work, we created an interactive version of this in Adobe XD and we also had a quick chat just to make sure that they understood the end result that we were after. Another really important step here is to hand over all the individual design files that your developer is going to need to implement the design. Things like icons, photography and graphics and illustrations, for example. If you use Adobe XD, there's a super easy way to do this. If you go to the design tab and you click the asset that you want to make available, and then you scroll down and you choose mark for export. Then when you share the document, you make sure that you put development as the sharing setting. And this way your developer will be able to just go in and download all the assets for one website page all at once. And this is a super easy way to just build as you go and have everything in one place. They will also be able to see typefaces and color codes from your prototype, which is really useful. A last step to make sure that the handoff is really smooth is to be there and be available to give feedback on the design once it's on staging before it's launched. This means you can spot anything that isn't quite as you intended it to be. And it's also a really nice service. Your client sees that you're putting in this effort to make sure that the site is exactly as you wanted it and as they wanted it. I actually have a bonus tip and that is to offer any design stage like wireframes or the prototype of finished design in different interfaces. So showing it with mobile, showing it with desktop at least. And I think this is because when you're creating a design, if you're only showing it in one interface and then you're handing it over to someone else, they have to adapt that design. And that might not be something that's in the part of their scope of work, so they might not have time to put a lot of thought into that. So if you want to make sure that the brand is really consistent and your design experience is really consistent, 
make sure you include all those different formats in your original design. I really hope you thought this was helpful. If you want to learn more about how to build a great relationship with your clients and avoid scope creep, I actually made this video on how to present work to your clients. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.